Entering today, Jimbo Fisher's Aggies were 0-8 all-time against AP Top 5 teams. Jimbo was also still hunting for that first signature win at Texas A&M. And a quick reminder, this is year three. Today, a Florida team, the Aggies, weren't even supposed to play this season until COVID-19 forced changes to the schedule enters Kyle Field. It's the first time Florida has visited College Station since A&M's SEC debut in 2012. 7-0 Gators in the first. Kellen Mon in an empty backfield for a wide-open Chase Lang. We're tied at 7 in Aggie land. Late first quarter, Gators facing third down. Kyle Trask retreating, looking, fires. Kadarius Tony makes the grab. 14-7 Florida after one. Second quarter tied at 14. Naquan right from the one. 21-17 Gators at the half. Fourth quarter now, 28-24 Florida. Handoff to Isaiah Spiller, trucks the defender. 19 yards, A&M takes a 31-28 lead. 38-31 Florida now. Mon near midfield on play action. Rolls right, fires deep down the middle. Caleb Chapman, 51 yards. We're tied at 38. Two seconds left. Seth Small, a big kick. Aggies walk it off at home. 41-38 is your final. This, this is one game. I would celebrate 24 hours, get lined up, and go play Mississippi State. That, these don't mean anything if you don't follow them up and play well, practice well, and get understand the power of preparation and line up and play the next game. So it's a good win. It's a big win. You know, we've had, we had LSU. We had Kentucky. It was a good win first year. LSU was a big win. I get them, but they're all big wins. Like I always say, what's a big loss? Yeah, good point. Today's A&M's first top five win at home since 2002 against Oklahoma. Next week, it's back on the road. Texas A&M travels to face Mike Leach and Mississippi State. Kick set for 3 p.m. This might be the least hype surrounding the Red River showdown I've seen in easily five, maybe ten years. Oklahoma enters 0-2 in Big 12 play in Texas. Last time we saw the Longhorns, well, they laid an egg against TCU last week. But this game is one of those that always becomes a classic, even this year, when on paper it really should have been a dud. The 116th Red River Showdown at the reduced capacity Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Buckle up, y'all. First quarter, Spencer Rattler collapsing pocket. Fires across his body for a wide open Marvin Mims. The Sooners jump out to a quick 10-0 lead. Second quarter, Sam Ellinger lowers his shoulder into the end zone. We're tied at 10 in Dallas, 17-10 Oklahoma. It's Ellinger again. This kid, the entire offense for Texas today. He ties it at 17. Midway grad Tanner Mordecai comes in for Rattler in the second. Here he throws one behind Charleston Rambo. Somehow Rambo makes the grab, some kind of Houdini trick. We're tied at 17 going to the half. Late third quarter, and the Sooners have it again. TJ Pledger from the one. Punches it in. It's 31-17. Sooners after three. Final seconds after Ellinger cut it to seven. Keontae Ingram, we're heading to overtime for just the second time in Red River history. We go back and forth through the first three overtimes, trading touchdowns and missed field goals. Fourth OT, Rattler moving up in the pocket to Jake Stoops. It's 53-45 Sooners. Texas needs a score. Second down and goal. Ellinger for the end zone, overthrows his man, it's picked off, that's your ball game. Sooners get their first conference win, 53-45 over the Longhorns. Only three games this week in the Big 12. Texas Tech falls at Iowa State, 31-15. TCU falls at home to Kansas State, 21-14. Former Baylor Bear Graylin Arnold has been signed to the Philadelphia Eagles active roster. The Eagles announced the move today. He was promoted from the practice squad ahead of each of Philadelphia's past two games, meaning the move was required for the Eagles to move him up again. Arnold played 27 snaps the past two games, all on special teams. As a rookie, the Eagles face the Steelers in Pittsburgh tomorrow. Remember when the Astros finished the regular season with a losing record? That seems like forever ago, and truthfully, it has been. The Astros have dropped just one playoff game and are now set to begin their fourth straight ALCS. It is a in its four-game ALDS against Oakland, the bats were there plenty well for the Strohs. Pitching, though, will be Houston's focus as Tampa Bay managed to mostly contain a very potent and potentially explosive Yankees lineup. That means potential roster moves, but manager Dusty Baker says he could see himself using just the four Astros starters. Possibly. You know, we don't know. I mean, uh, everything depends on – it goes from game to game and goes on how much – how much use you have, uh, you know, from the previous game. So, you know, uh, you ask me questions that 
you know, game time action and, and, and each game will present itself. Game one set for tomorrow night. First pitch just after 630 p.m. Central and you know we will have you covered here on 6 News. That is it for sports. We'll be right back.